Our next question is from Tilson from Texas. Hey, Tilson, how can we help you? Hey, guys. Uh, so I've got a question about um, ankle and hip mobility. So since you guys started doing the uh, those Prime Pro seminars, I started incorporating the Combat Stretch, the 90-90, and Froggers quite a bit. Um, I discovered that my hips and, and my ankles, but a lot of my hips were really, really tight. And uh, since I've been doing those for the last few months, it's substantially helped. But um, my squat form, I still struggle to do a body weight squat and keep my toes pointed mostly forward. Uh, I kind of have to keep my feet turned really heavily outward in order to keep a good form or I'll roll forward or my ankle, or I mean, uh, my heels will come up. So I'm trying to figure out what to do to improve because I feel like I've plateaued with the 90-90s and the combat stretch uh, and the froggers as well. So I'm trying to see what, what to break that plateau with. Okay, great question. So so there's a lot more than just those mobility movements that you named. So you went on and you watched the webinar and Adam went through, he was the one that taught that one. And by the mm -hmm. way, if, if, if you're watching or listening to this, I uh, highly suggest you go check this out. I think it's mm -hmm. primeprowebinar.com. Adam picked his favorite movements that he likes to teach. But those were a few movements. There's literally hundreds of movements. Um, and when you when you hit a, a roadblock with one, that doesn't mean you're done. It doesn't mean that your ankle mobility can't improve anymore. It's probably a good idea now to utilize other mobility movements. It's no different than exercises in the gym. When you're trying to develop your shoulders, for example, and you hit a plateau, sometimes what you need to do is do a different exercise, a different stimulus on the body. So I would recommend if you don't have access, do you have access to Prime Pro, the actual program? Yeah, actually, after I did the webinar, I bought both Prime and Prime Pro uh, in the bundle last year. So excellent. I've been, yeah, I've been kind of following those as well. Um, but like I said, I, I just kind of hit a wall, it feels like, and I'm not sure, I, I haven't been sure what to do to improve that. Well, the, a couple of things too. Keep in mind, just like uh, weight loss and, and muscle building, like it's it's not always linear, right? So it's not, just, just because we're seeing progress in mobility doesn't mean you're going to have, especially if you're also lifting too. Are you lifting too? Yeah. Uh, actually, I just finished anabolic as well. So <laughs> right. So if, I mean, if, if we were all focused on mobility and you weren't lifting it, you got to understand that when you go and you strength train, it kind of conflicts with becoming more mobile too, unless you're really challenging the in range of motion, you're not loading it very much. So every time you go and load that bar and you probably push higher weights, that's making it that much more challenging to work on the mobility. So, but that doesn't mean you can't do both. You absolutely can do both, but just understand that that kind of conflicts sometimes with working on your hip and ankle mobility. So it took me almost a year and a half, two years to get to where I'm at right now. And a lot of times that meant uh, today I was going to lift, but you know what? I care more about my mobility right now and improving that. So I'm skipping the lift. I'm doing all mobility work for the day because that was such a focus. And I knew that if I were to go and lift heavy that day, I may not see the same progress on my mobility. And that was my main focus. So un be, be patient with yourself a little bit. If you're both strength training and working on mobility at the same time, uh, it's going to probably take a little bit longer. Yeah, a lot of these things take a long right. time to correct if it's been years of patterning in a certain direction too. So uh, you got to give yourself uh, some time to, to be able to really like solidify that signal. Uh, have you been doing toe squats and, and, and such, uh, you know, in terms of like ankle mobility besides the combat stretch? Uh, no, the combat stretch is the primary one. Um, I can't remember the name of the, some of the movements in uh, Prime that I've followed as well, but I've tried focusing a lot more heavily on the stuff that target the ankles okay. and uh, and the hips. I would, yeah, the I combat would stretch is the primary try one. Try it out. Try the toe squat. Try it with like a lacrosse ball, like squeezing between both ankles and, and try and, and, and work on that and, and Focus on another exercise that will actually help to, you know, maybe even push you a little bit further in that direction. Yeah, here's the other thing about, mobi right. about mobility. Mobility responds exceptionally well to frequency. Exceptionally well. Okay, so when it comes to strength training, frequency is great, but at some point you get diminishing returns. You can't work out five times a day every single day and expect to see strength gains. It's just too much. But with mobility, if you do it once a day versus two times a day versus three times a day, the more you do it, the better you and faster you improve. So it's just one of those things. If you're not doing it daily, do it daily. If you are doing it daily, do it twice a day. Literally increase the frequency. Each time you increase the frequency, 
you'll see an improvement in your mobility. I also see some value back to what Justin says. I want to piggyback off of what he said because I think there's a lot of value in this. So let's say I'm following like MAPS Anabolic. This is where I'm going to interchange some exercise. So MAPS Anabolic, say, calls for a, a, a traditional barbell back squat that day. Instead of doing a traditional barbell back squat, I'm going to do those tippy-toe squats that Justin's talking about and work on depth and range of motion and ankle c control and strength. Like that's going to become a priority. So I'm still squatting, but the the focus is different. On deadlift, man, then the next the couple of days later, I've got deadlifting. So instead of going mm -hmm. barbell deadlifts, I'm going to do like single leg dumbbell yes. deadlifts. And to add to that right. too, in the single leg, um, I mean, we have some videos that kind of cover this, but uh, when you're doing your single leg, making sure that your ankle doesn't turn in like and, and your toes are turning out, which is the external rotation is something that you're trying to correct. So, you know, really slowing down and, and being focused Focused on when that tends to break and want to move, uh, you, you know, would be the focus of in the intent of the exercise. Awesome. Okay. All right. Fantastic. No problem. Thanks for calling in. Yeah. Thank you guys for taking my question. I uh, I appreciate it. I appreciate everything you guys do for everybody. So thank you guys. Thank you. Awesome. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's one of those things with um, with mobility. Like the frequency is a big one for me. I, I've I the most limber and most mobile I ever was was when I was doing uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And this was four or five days a week of Jiu-Jitsu, which is you're always being stretched and put in different weird positions. And then on top of it, two or three times a day, I'd get down on the floor and do stuff. It, when I do mobility once a week or twice a week, I see a little bit of an improvement. It's like the yeah. more I do, the faster I improve. And it's not like that with other forms of exercise. You know, you can't do that with strength training, for example. Yeah, our body just changes all the time, and you have to just consider if you are strength training, which you brought up, Adam, too. Like it, it's going to affect like all the progress you're making, mobility wise, and you, you know you're sort of you got to like weigh it out based on what your needs are specifically right then and right uh, now for your body. And so to to be able to kind of weave in and out of strength training versus mobility training, something to always consider. Yeah, this I mean this is also why we always talk about the even our programs as as well written as they all are that you should mold them to your specific goals. You know, I think there's nothing wrong with him running MAPS Anabolic. It's a great program to be in right now. But because he's so heavily focused on mobility, this is for sure where I'm going to interchange some exercises. It's just mm -hmm. if, you're, if your goal at that time is more of that and not squat PRs or deadlift PRs, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to replace those movements with movements like them that are going to train the same muscles, but the focus is now on like stability, control, and mobility, right, and range of motion. So – this is where I think that you should interchange it because here's the deal. If you do, even if you have great high frequency on your mobility and then squat day comes around <clears throat> and you load the bar heavy because sure. you're in strength phase, sure. your your default pattern is going to come out. When the, when the body doesn't know any better, like you, you put a bunch of weight on there, it's going to do whatever it needs to do to get that weight back up. So that's hard to do that while you're also trying to make mobility gains, right? Or a range of motion gains and stability gains. So I would, I would interchange a lot of the barbell exercises for for unilateral stability type training and and you could still follow maps anabolic but that needs to become the priority especially if you've hit a plateau that's great advice